money, sex, murder. <laughs> Some people just can't get enough. Being married to Fort Knox does have its advantages. Dennis Franz, Peter Strauss, Heather Locklear. The press calls it engrossing. Texas Justice, Sunday on ABC. This is 21 Alive, news on the hour. Good morning, I'm Eric Olson. Battle lines may be drawn even clearer today over the nomination of Henry Foster as Surgeon General. Several medical groups have joined together to voice their support for the Tennessee doctor. We've got a formula for love and we tried it out on our whole audience. Does it work? Find out next Oprah. Friday at 4 on 21 Alive. More news for you next hour in Live Line at Noon with government professor Dr. Bruce Smith. Why are some women only attracted to married men? Most of the time it's just a game. Next, Sally Jesse Raphael. Friday at 10 on 21 Alive. Your local McDonald's restaurants are proud to sponsor the WPTA Community School Network. In a single phone call, parents can find out about homework, school activities, lunch menus, and a variety of other important school matters. Over 40 leading schools in the Fort Wayne area have teamed together with McDonald's and 21 Alive to help parents access important information related to their children's education 24 hours a day. It's free and allows you, the parent, to take a more active role in your child's future. Call your school to see if they're on the WPTA Community School Network. Next, Sally, could you stop your best friend from seeing a married man? Well, you may have the latest thing. It's called attention deficit disorder, and you don't have it. Mm -hmm. And neither do you. Do you know who I am? <laughs> do you know? I'm not Big Bird, but I'm going to have to do for now. What a beautiful, beautiful children. Uh, what isn't funny is that uh, we have uh, three adults on the stage who do have attention deficit disorder. This is a thing where, uh, let me see if I can understand. Y you know, you start to read an article in the paper, you never finish it. <laughs> you start to write a note and you get up and you go and turn on the TV. And then you forget to pick the kids up. Or you forget where you dropped them off. That actually happened to you, didn't it? <laughs> it, it happened. Am I wrong, Mom? You are Cynthia Chambers. You're from uh, Fairfield, California. And you are one hotshot realtor, we should say. You do well. Didn't you win awards and sell the most and the best? And you're really on the go. You are a very ambitious I person. Ranked, I, last year in a national company, I ranked number 10 in the Western United States. Well, then uh, when my home is ready to be sold, I'm calling you. <laughs> What's the so, so what's the problem, Cynthia? You look fine to us. Tell us. Well, I um, I forget things a lot. You know, you you get up in the morning and you look at your husband and you say, I'm going to go over to Napa and I'm going to put a lockbox on. I'll be ba I'll be home in a couple of hours, and you come home at 11 o'clock that night. This and is something you've been doing. Yes, and you he's did. really, well, I don't have a husband any longer. Really? <laughs> well, you don't want to applaud that. I mean, uh, uh, but uh, you also literally, what was with the kids? You took the kids? What is, what, what is that? Well, I, you know, you drop, you drop them off someplace and, and you forget to go pick them up. And, you know, it, it doesn't dawn on you that it's 3 o'clock and you really do need to go and pick up your child at school. He's standing in the rain. Yeah. So is this then a, a series of impulsive behaviors throughout the day? Is this so? Mm-hmm. Impulsive shopping? Well, some. No, not necessarily. Um... Well, what, what kind of things would you do? Uh, oh, you, you also, uh, do you go from job to job? Uh, I did until I became a real estate agent. When I became a real estate agent, I found a legal way to be an excitement junkie. Uh, so have you been then honestly diagnosed with mm -hmm. ADD? Honestly a diagnosed with ADD. Attention deficit disorder. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what I know about that. It'll take me 10 seconds. Okay that uh, you have a hard time concentrating. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times you're talking to a person and the person is just talking to you and it's such a wonderful conversation and you're standing there and you're listening and you're looking right in the front. And, and you're you not there. You have no idea what the hell that person's talking about. <laughs> That's, you know, so this is, is it a brain disorder or something? If, what is if, it? If I understand it correctly, the frontal part of my brain doesn't turn on the way other people's brain turns on until I create a crisis. Now, right. I do create a lot of crises. Yes. So then the frontal part of my brain turns on. I see. But you, you, or you hyper-focus. Sometimes I'll sit down to work on the computer, and I sit down to work on the computer, and I really, I need to be someplace in 45 minutes. And five hours later, 
I'm still working on the computer. Uh, Miss Bloomgarden is nodding with uh, affirmation. You know about this. Oh, yes, except I have the H, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, which means it's very hard for me to sit still while you're speaking. That's why I have this ball to squeeze. Yeah. Um, can you stand up for just a second? Uh-oh. Just stand up. No, let me just sit down there for a second. Okay. Let me tell you what I notice yeah, I do. I'll hold the microphone. Oh, you, then oh, I will, oh, they won't right, be able to hear yeah, me. Yeah, sorry. Oh, God forbid they wouldn't be able to hear me. Uh, <laughs> now, let me tell you. Here's, here's what I find I do all the time. Mm-hmm. I make stars with my foot. I do stars. Yeah. Is this, am I, you think? Okay. Yeah. You think <laughs> I got it? It's, it's not, no, no, it's not about having it, because a lot of people probably are wondering, do I have it also? It's about, did it cause a problem for you in your life that it's become a disorder? It caused a great deal of problems for me. I am different from Cynthia in that I am always on time. I focus too much where if I'm looking at the audience right now, my problem is I can't focus out the stuff that's not important. I don't know how to filter out. So when a teacher was teaching me in school, Right. It's okay, Haley. When a teacher was teaching me in school, I'd look at the teacher, I'd hear the children smacking the gum, I'd hear the kids in the hall, and when they would say, you're not listening, I'd be listening so intently, I didn't hear a word of what they were saying. Uh -huh. and, but you were easily distracted as well. You totally, were, uh -huh. totally. Um, and if you had known this when you were a kid, uh, so accompanying this, whatever this is, this syndrome, is a lot of uh, low self-esteem, isn't it? Well, the bottom line is there were suicide attempts. I hated myself. I was led to believe that it was my fault because I couldn't do what the other children were doing. Being a girl is also a second handicap because the old expression, boys will be boys, were allowed to be physical. Right. I was not allowed to be physical. I had to go to ballet school. My parents did the best they could. But I really needed soccer or football. Right. I needed to let out this excess energy. That's why I do this, because uh -huh. I have this extra energy. Uh, are you medicated? Yes, I am. Cynthia, what do you take? I take uh, Dexedrine three times a day, and it does keep me on task, which helps. And then I also take something for uh, depression, and I take, uh, right now I'm on Zoloft. Right. Now let's hope that's all you have to do. That sounds like a potpourri of stuff you're putting in your body, and there's no side effects then, you're saying? No. And, and it works for you? Yes. Are you medicated? I sure am. I take Ritalin and Zoloft, and again, the Zoloft, I know the baby's no, distracting here. No, look at this. Here. Look at this. He just, look at, they just really discovered each other <laughs> here. <laughs> look at this. Oh, yes. You'll that. have a look talk show very shortly. <laughs> Taking away my, okay. Yeah, go ahead. You, you were the, saying. Yeah, the medication, basically, it's the same as someone on insulin. If you're a diabetic, you need the insulin. Right. When we take the medication, it's not a drug. It's like taking a vitamin. Right. So I take the Ritalin to, so that I could sit still, otherwise you wouldn't be able to see me sitting here, and I take the Zoloft for the depression. What came first, the depression or the ADD? They don't know. Uh, I hope this is correct because it doesn't look like it is. You, lo you look younger than 45, are you? 43, thank you. 43. You're um, This did lead to certain behaviors, though, that were, self that were destructive. Tell me, Absolutely. like, for example. Well, I was always looking for attention because I couldn't achieve attention the right way. So as a young child, the suicide attempts were my way of getting attention. Then I was very promiscuous because I didn't know that somebody could like me for me. Um, then I got addicted to drugs. Now, the drug addiction, um, as Cynthia's shaking her head, <laughs> the problem is, in my generation, when we started smoking a joint or taking a pill, everybody, everybody was doing it. And people are nodding in the audience. The difference is, I didn't know that I would become addicted because I crossed over the line, because for me, cocaine mellowed me out. It wasn't a drug. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that when I was taking cocaine that I was just becoming a person I always wanted to be. Right. Right. Uh -huh. uh, now, we thank you for this honesty, and let me just pursue the promiscuity thing just a little bit here. Uh, putting it in the vernacular, you were, for a while then, during your 20s and your single days or whatever on earth, you were easy, as we mm -hmm. would have said. Younger than that, actually. That was the problem. Yeah, absolutely. In your teenage years? Yeah. Yeah. Just so you would walk into a crowded room and head right for the guy that would make you the worst, the most miserable. Absolutely. And Always. you'd grab him with both hands. Or he'd grab me, one of right. the two. In any event, this was a neurotic satisfaction that you were getting just, you know, somebody loves me? Is this what yes. I... Yes. It wasn't so much a neurotic satisfaction. It was, this is all I could get. I didn't know that I couldn't do what, quote, other girls could do. I couldn't sit there, keep my mouth closed, not give my opinion, and be a sweet, nice girl. I always wanted to be one of those nice girls. Mm -hmm. I am a nice girl, but I didn't know that. So I would say what was on my mind. In those days, girls weren't supposed to say what was on their mind. Uh, we haven't spoken to Dr. Brent Wood 
Woodfield. Yes, this is Brent Woodfield, M.D., um, from uh, Oklahoma. You have ADD. That's right. Well, are you fidgety, too? If you get me in church, I'm a mess. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, maybe all you need is a maybe all you need is a new preacher. But but that's another show. Um, this is very very serious with you, Doctor uh, Woodfield. You uh, you got yourself in trouble in terms of uh, the people who o who oversee uh, the medical practices of various uh, health providers, including you. And they blew the whistle on you. There's a whole list of complaints about the you. And incidentally, you lost your marriage, didn't you, as a, as a result? Right. Yeah. And you were finally diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. That's right. We'll be, when we come back, we'll talk uh, with Dr. Woodfield about exactly what happened. And we'll give you some signs. Maybe you'd want to take a test. I see several people in this audience who aren't looking at me. <laughs> I see several people in this audience looking at their watches. <laughs> um, is, that a, is that a sign? I mean, is, no. No. No, if, if they were really and truthfully having ADD, they would have left. Really? <laughs> well, we should thank goodness for these small victories. <laughs> So far, they're here. You've heard of this before now. This is another... Incidentally, can, is this a, an abuse excuse? You know? Hey, I'm sorry I'm drunk driving. I have ADD, so just let me go home now and take my pills. I don't know. But uh, increasing numbers of people are being diagnosed with attention deficit disorder and attention deficit hyper... Activity disorder. Hyperactivity disorder. What's the difference? We'll tell you when we come back to talk about this, the newest of what ails us in just a moment. hot temperatures. I feel like I could fry an egg on my head sometimes. Like you're in a pressure cooker. We asked some of the hottest chefs in town to switch from their antiperspirant to Degree. Anything that keeps me dry in the kitchen is worth trying. As your body heat rises, Degree releases extra protection when you need it most. It just worked all night. It kicked in as I got hotter or got busier. Switch to the antiperspirant that's body heat activated. It leaves me feeling confident and I can walk out and, and greet customers and not even have to worry about it. Degree antiperspirant for an extra degree of protection. Ricola. <laughs> Ricola. Ricola, natural herb cough drops, a pleasant tasting blend of organically grown herbs and other natural ingredients from Switzerland. Here's another reason to switch from freeze-dried to dark, rich Folgers crystals. Folgers looks and smells more like ground roast coffee. Folgers crystals, smell the difference in an instant. This Valentine's Day, your nearby Scott store will make it easy to sweep someone off their feet with a dozen boxed long-stemmed red roses, only $34.99 from Scott's Floral Department. Surprise someone with an unexpected treat from Scott's Bakery. Creative baked goods made especially for them or a delicious fruit basket, perfect any time of the year. Make this Valentine's Day special and let Scott's take care of the details. Scott's, for the special days and every day. We're your store. It's an evening when East meets West on Middle Ground, and when jazz meets pop music. It's when Israeli vocal phenomenon Noah comes to your community. Celebrating her international recording debut, produced by jazz great Pat Metheny, Noah and acoustical guitarist Gil Dore will perform as part of the Mideast West Fest. Appearing at the Grand Wayne Center, Tuesday, February 14th at 7.30 p.m. Call the Fort Wayne Jewish Federation at 422-8566 for tickets. The Mideast West Fest is sponsored in part by Lufthansa German Airlines. We have Ritalin for all of you before our show is over. <laughs> well, we're going to have to laugh at this, but it isn't funny if you're living it. Um, yes, there really is an attention deficit disorder, and there are places where you can go and sit down and talk about it and have therapy and meet other people similarly 
afflicted. Is that not so? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, doctor, tell me about you now. Was it, you, as you look back on your childhood, was there evidence of this uh, syndrome or, or disorder? Well, I think mine was covered up. I w was raised on a cattle ranch, and I was always working. And my father kind of had a philosophy of, of raising a kid so that he'd sublimate his energy or focus sure. his energy. So I don't think as a child it was really um, seen. Um, I, 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 uh, but when did this begin to become a distraction for you? Or is there any time when you can tell us that some of the things you were doing that you, you felt were... Well, I think it was a distraction when um, I had a lot of things facing me and uh, there was this and that coming at me. I was busy as I could be and somebody came at me with something inane. And I would, have, I would have a tendency to be either short with them or irritable or, or whatever. You, that you, was a big part of it. Mm -hmm. You're both nodding. Mm -hmm. You know this. So belligerence, irritability, easily upset, temper, I don't know, I'm asking. Blunt. Verbal aggression? Blunt. Blunt. Yeah. OT, there's an expression, OTM, on the mind, out the mouth. And it's not so much no blunt. Filter. No, it's not so much blunt. It's that many times I'd think something and something else would come out. It didn't connect. There was a misconnection in my communication. Mm -hmm. uh, and and the, yeah, there's this, the sign on the wall. Uh, there's a poster that says, the hurrier, the hurrier I go, the behind her I get. Uh, in your case, the more the pressure came down on you, the more you tightened up. Is this so? I mean, it's like. Well, it wasn't that exactly. It was. I think I did well in those situations because as an individual with ADD, I could, I could do 60 million things all at once, and I was used to that. It was when something can when I had to do something that I viewed as not so worthy, or let's say a patient came to me, I was really busy and I had this emergency or that emergency, and some patient came to me with just a problem that I didn't really think was, uh, that I needed to deal with at that point. I had a tendency not to be able to deal with it in a way so that individual will walk away feeling okay. Are you medicated? Yes. And what do you take, doctor? I take Silert and Tenormin. Right. And does it alter your mood? Oh, yeah. Is it addictive? No. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I take a child's dose. A child's, a child's dose. dose. Uh, the question I have is why medication? Um, are, are, is there any way to work with this uh, with, through behavioral therapy? Well, I think it depends on the individual. I, I mean, I, I find that the medication is very, very salient thing. It takes away the irritability, and um, I'm a um, happy camper. Yeah. You know? I, but you did lose your uh, family, didn't you? Lost my family. I lost my life. My life was destroyed. By, because of ADD? Oh, yeah. Uh, because when you were home, you were uh, hard to live with. Well, Don't tell me now that's a long story. It's an hour show we got here. It is a long story. Yeah. But the, the eventual, the process of being diagnosed destroyed my life. Okay. In other words, there were a number of misdiagnoses that led up to the correct diagnosis, and that's right. what eventually... But along the way, we have the testimonies here of two honest women who are saying that they have, were very difficult to live with, that there are features of this disorder that are... To be sure, antisocial. Oh, yeah. Well, are you? Will you acknowledge that as well? Oh, absolutely. Well, like yeah. what? What? What were some of the things you did? Oh, let's say I were working on the dishwasher, okay, and I was right in the middle. Of, I just, just, just about got that kind of difficult right. screw in there, and I'm just starting to turn it. And somebody comes up to me and asks me a question. And then what happens? Lose my temper. You get angry. Right. Okay, hang on one second. Yeah, the one problem I really have, and I hope you're all not trying to use this, is when people get in trouble with the law, or they, there you go, and I hear that all the time, and I think that given another five or ten years and enough lawyers that pretty soon everybody can find some disease or illness and, for everything. And nobody will have to take responsibility for anything? Right. Yeah. That's you right. know, it's just...
agree with you. But you still have to take responsibility for what you've done. I still have to take responsibility when I forget to come home at night because it's, it's not nice. I, I, I'm a realtor and I understand why my family worries about me. I'm showing vacant houses. Mm -hmm. But I have to take the medication and then I have to develop new habits. I still have to take responsibility for it. I just have to, I, yeah. you, you wouldn't condemn somebody if they had to take right. insulin and they passed out. Uh, you, you wanted to say, Ms. Yeah. Bloomgarden. Yeah, it's Karen Phillips. Karen. Okay. Right. The bottom line is we're not here, I know I'm not here to say this is what made me do anything. The ADHD didn't cause it, but because of it, I've had some problems in my life. So by educating people, hopefully teachers and other people will understand, I wasn't being disrespectful by not listening. I didn't know how to listen. I'm now training teachers and camp people how to work with kids because they don't understand. We're not belligerent. We don't know how to do it. Uh, Dr. Woodfield wife is with us. Lisa is here with Max. Max, what's up? Mm. Well, I got a lot of viewers that would love to be able to put one of those in my mouth many times. Um, uh, you met at an ADD uh, therapy. Yeah, what is it? A conference, a chat conference in Chicago. Uh -huh, yeah, so you, uh, do you, have you? I also have ADD, I yes. Yes. And um, my former marriage is, was a problem for right. me, too. What were well. your symptoms? I mean, like, what, what kind of behaviors did you... Well, I'm impulsive, and um, I tend to be very emotional, very moody at times, and um, forgetful. I would forget things, too, as well. Um, I don't know, and I, and I have a real hard time with focusing. And I, I knew from the time I was a child that I needed absolutely quiet situations <laughs> in order to focus on, on things that I love to do, like reading. A lot of kids with ADD don't even attempt to read because it's difficult. Uh -huh. This is very important, what you're saying, although Max is, uh, you know, certainly getting our attention as well. Hard to read, hard to concentrate, uh, impulsivity, impatience. I was one of those quiet wallflowers in school, and, and uh, the teachers never had any problem with my behavior, but I, they always were saying I uh, didn't pay attention, I was daydreaming, I, I didn't listen to the instructions. Right. And because I was a girl and I was not a, a behavior problem in school, right. um, that it was not diagnosed until I was an adult. Uh -huh. And you probably felt lousy about yourself as well. Right? I had a very low self-esteem. Right. Well, we, ha we wish you well. Your baby's five months old. Your marriage isn't, can't be much older than that, and we wish you well, and uh, you're trying to start a new life here. We really do have a doctor who will come out and try and give us a, at least a, a little bit of an understanding of how we're doing here. But before we meet him, we'll meet a family with a son who engaged in criminal behavior until he was diagnosed ADD. And yes, you'll be able to ask all your suspicious questions when we come back in just a moment. <laughs> Jean, how are you feeling? Much better, except for this pile of bills. <laughs> oh, thanks. Wow, you weren't even in the hospital that long. Long enough, look. Bill, 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 check. Oh, company benefits? Not a chance. That money goes to the hospital. This money is mine. Oh, who's it from? It's my first day 500 hospital cash insurance plan. You get $500 the first day you're in the hospital, then $250 every day after that. Sounds great. But I have an HMO. I don't need that. Don't count on it. Look, this is what I owe after the insurance is paid. Not to mention the mortgage, car payments. Believe me, you really need the cash. Is it expensive? It's already paid for itself the first time I used it. How can I get it? It's easy. Let me get you the number. <laughs> Call this number now, because if you're age 18 to 59, you're eligible for the first day 500 hospital cash plan. These days, if you're in the hospital, you have a lot to come home to. Higher deductibles, co-payments, no matter what type of insurance you have, and especially if you don't have any, you'll probably owe more than you think. That's why you need First Day 500. First Day because it pays from hospital day one. 500 because that's how much you collect. $500 right up front. Then $250 every day after that for accident or illness. No deductibles, no limit to how much you collect, and no restrictions on doctors or hospitals. This is cash direct to you for every covered hospital stay, paid regardless of whether or not you have other insurance. Don't wait until you're faced with a pile of bills. Call now. That was easy. Now I feel better, too. 
If you're age 18 to 59, you're eligible for these supplemental cash benefits. Call 1-800-506-5800 for your free information from the National Home Life Assurance Company. That's 1-800-506-5800. Karen in red, yeah. I just want to know what you did as a profession, what you got. Oh, thank you so much. I teach handicapped children physical education so I get the energy out, and I refer children to summer camps because I know how kids feel, and I want to make sure they go to the right places. Thank you. Yes. Yes, I was just wondering if anyone knows um, if the syndrome can be hereditary. Very. It yes. is hereditary, yeah. huh? Yep. Yes, sir. Yes. It just seems to me that the first two ladies have a lot of similarity in symptoms, yet right. the gentleman in the middle, I find no similarity to his symptoms and the others, and it, it well, seems like there's a catch-all here. Yeah, but let's not get into, we cannot diagnose as amateurs from afar. People with ADD do not all act mm -hmm. the same way. I mean, That's it, the H. <laughs> the H is the hyperactivity. ADD is the inability to focus. The H is inability to focus and hyper. Yeah. What is the criteria for the determination and the uh, diagnosis and what might be the organic causes? Absolutely great question. I have a doctor who's going to be able to speak to that a little more thoroughly when he comes out here in just a moment. First, I want you to meet Scott Perry. Scott, you're 20. You're here with your folks uh, who sit in our front row. You're from Springfield, Oregon, and you have seen the world. My good man, you look like just the kind of guy we want uh, our daughters to date. But there was a time when that wasn't necessarily so. You went off the edge of the table here. You t took your parents' car. Uh, now, you, you, how much did you get from the ATM machine? <laughs> About uh, round numbers. A couple of thousand. Yeah. Who's, uh, it was your folks' account? Yeah. You knew the numbers so you could push the buttons. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's a talk show, Scott. You gotta raise your voice just a little Sorry. bit here. How long were you on the lamb here? Or were you, were you f I mean, they were chasing you, weren't oh, they? Uh, it was only a couple of days. Uh, three or four. Yeah. At the, at that time. Right. And do you know why you did this? What was going on here? Had you ever done anything like this before? No. <laughs> well, you, you know, but you had some problems in school, did you not? Yeah. You weren't really, it wasn't sinking in, was it? No. Some I, of the stuff? Yeah. I just didn't do well in school. Right. So when the teacher's up there going with the blackboard, and blah, 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 nothing was, nothing was on record, was it? Mm. You must have been one depressed young man. Yeah, at times. <laughs> uh, and you must have been doing badly in school. Yeah. Right. Okay. Did you ever act out? Did you ever punch anybody out? I don't know. I'm asking. Um, the teachers, you mean? Well, anybody. <laughs> no. well, um, there was a, you know, a couple of fights. That... You had a couple of fights, but it wasn't chronic. I don't. I'm not trying to make a problem no, here. No. All right. Why then did you take off in the in your parents' car, steal the money, and take off like this? My my mom my mom's a teacher and uh, she, and she always expected me to do better in school than I, you know, was doing. And I just didn't get along with my family at all. We got in a big fight, and so I just decided I wanted to live, you know, yeah. go somewhere else. But you were going to do some time, weren't you? Yeah. How much, did you have to go to jail? Uh, yeah. How, many, how much time did you do? Altogether, about nine or ten months. In a cell? Yeah. Well, Mom, <laughs> this isn't what we want for our sons, is it? No. Uh, do you want us to know that, what, your son was diagnosed with... Attention deficit disorder, is he? He was diagnosed when he was in the fifth grade. And he um, was having trouble socially, not doing well in school. He says I wanted him to do real well. Of course, every parent wants sure. him to do well. Sure. I knew he had potential. I didn't expect any more of him than I thought he could do. But anyway, um, then when he got to um, middle school, it meant a pill at noon is what it meant. and. No way was he going to give up his social lunch time to take a medication at noon. Uh, so he did not take his medication. Mm -mm. I see. So uh, you must have been, it's like living with a time bomb then. I mean, you, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And Dad, you're standing there all this time saying, holy cow, what kind of son is this? I don't know. Tell me what's going through your head. We had him to every counselor we could uh, get him to in, in town. <laughs> we tried behavior modification, all of the latest gimmicks. The harder we tried, the harder we pushed the worse it got. That's what, yeah, uh, the pressure makes him all the less sure. capable of processing or making. Scott kept saying, I don't fit in. 
I don't, I'm not like you guys. Uh -huh. I'm not like this family. We had a uh, unpleasant or a not a very flattering job uh, history, too. Isn't that so? Your son <laughs> did? What? With that? What, you, you quit easily? Yeah. <laughs> like? Uh, huh? Just didn't get along with the management. They really wanted all the tedious little jobs done. Right. And I found quicker ways to do them. And they didn't like that. Right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, even though they were done right, I right. just didn't. Are you medicated, Scott? Yeah. You are. What do you take? Wellbutrin. Wellbutrin. Now, this is good, is it, huh? Mm -hmm. It helps. It helps. Is he at home? No. He's not at home. He's on his own. He's on his own. Oh, that's his so wife and baby. that's your baby. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh, that's, uh, let's see, this is Max and Haley, yes. Mm -hmm. Look at, look at Haley. Oh, that's your go to New York and get on TV outfit, too. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, do you notice this in your husband, or do you, is he, you know, better now? I, I, you know, I'm, you're not an RN, I realize, but you certainly have the closest uh, view of his behavior. Yeah, there's a point where he decided that he's been on medication long enough and decided to get off. Yeah. He tried it for a month, and there was a major difference. Like? Um, he was short-tempered, very moody, um, couldn't handle things as he does in day-to-day yeah. -day life. So you understand what's up here then, don't you, Scott? I mean, you get it. What, yeah. You must feel better about yourself to know that this wasn't, you know, this isn't because you're a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> and you felt like a jerk when all this was going on. Yeah. Not unlike the other guests we've talked to here. Uh, we'll meet Dr. Hollowell in just a moment, who's a psychiatrist from Cambridge, Massachusetts, and he's going to give us an overview about and also an idea about what symptoms we might want to look for. And this audience, ever suspicious, continues to look with their <laughs> eyebrows raised, and you'll get a chance to ask everything that you doubt about when we come back in just a moment. <laughs> My new denture adhesive is polygrip free. It has no artificial flavor to interfere with foods or drinks, no artificial colors either. It holds my denture so tight, I can even eat this apple. Thanks to polygrip free. Mrs. Butterworth, you are different. Oh, I'm filled with the country. The goodness of cinnamon and vanilla. I want to sing like a lark, skip like a stone. Oh, I'm babbling like a brook. <laughs> New Mrs. Butterworth's country best recipe. I used to think, lotions are just lotions. What's the difference? Not anymore. Jergens has created six different ways to moisturize your skin. One was made just for me. Ultra healing is for me. My skin is so dry, I need fast, long-lasting relief. All my skin really needs is light care with aloe. It absorbs quickly and it keeps my skin healthy looking. And me, I use dual healing cream because I need something extra to help heal my rough, dry spots. So what's the Jergens difference? Now you can choose skincare that's right for you. Someone knows what it feels like to hide from the world. Scared, scared. Someone knows what it feels like to be afraid. I just want to die. Someone knows what loneliness feels like. Alone. What hopelessness feels like. So what secrets alone. feel like. Maybe that someone is you. If you suffer from depression, call Charter at 1-800-CHARTER. If you don't get help at Charter, please get help somewhere. Listen to what residents are saying about Coventry Court townhomes. It's been really great here. Uh, the front office people are really super, really nice. I originally came here on a temporary basis. I've stayed here 28 years because it's been comfortable. Two things I like about living here is working out at the Free Health Club and jogging through Foster Park. I really love the free tanning bed. So if you want a great place to call home, call Coventry Court and join the best apartment community Fort Wayne has to offer. Call now and get a $99 deposit on most townhomes. Why have the biggest stars in Hollywood trusted their hair to Lori Davis? This year, the most important new thing you could do for your hair is treat it to a Lori Davis shampoo and her incredible perfection. It's like getting a whole new head of hair. You'll see and feel the difference the very first time you use them. Now, for the first time ever, Lori's products are available in stores at 50% off her salon prices. So see for yourself the incredible difference Lori Davis products can make with your hair. Is your best friend 
too close with your husband and you want to confront them about it, give us a call at 1-800-205-7445. That's 1-800-205-7445. Attention deficit disorder? How many wonder? Oh, you think you do? Oh, let me give you. Show them on the Chiron, uh, show them on the uh, monitors, Brian. Here we go. We'll do this in a hurry. Uh, do you have ADD? At least 15 criteria need to be met. Do you have a sense of underachievement? Do you have difficulty getting organized? How about chronic procrastination? You're always putting things off. Many simultaneous projects. Trouble following through. Oh, man, I had a boss like this. Saying what comes to mind without considering the timing of the remark. You know, you don't tell a woman she's got a nice dress on at a funeral. Frequent search for high stimulation. We heard some testimony about that. Intolerance of boredom. Can't stand it. You got any more, Brian? Easily distracted. Trouble focusing attention or always drifting away. Coupled with being hyper-focused. How many people do you know like this? Where, you know, you just, you know they're not listening. Often creative, intuitive, highly intelligent. Well... Uh, trouble going through proper procedure. Uh, Scott was talking about that. Impatient. Uh, impatient. You have a low tolerance for frustration. You're impulsive. You're hot-tempered. You worry needlessly or endlessly. You're always worrying. Cut it out. Sense of impending doom or insecurity. You have mood swings. You're restless. And you have addictive behavior. Is that? Oh, my. You know, I'm, I mean, I got a headache just reading it. You have chronic self-esteem problems. You have uh, an inaccurate self-observation. You don't know who you are. Family history of manic depressive illness or depression or substance abuse. Thank you. That'll be $50. Let's have your money right now. All right, doctor, you're on. Boy, have we been looking for you. You are a real live psychiatrist. You are Ed, Edward Ned Hollowell, MD, from Cambridge, Mass. You're an instructor in psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. It will not come as any surprise to you, doctor, that some of these guests think, here we go again, we got another alphabet soup disorder. In order to excuse our behavior, go get them, doctor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, attention deficit disorder is not an excuse for anything. And uh, we'll just let's take it out of that realm altogether. What ADD is uh, uh, similar to what uh, uh, nearsightedness probably was when that was first discovered. They'd say, what, what do you mean nearsighted? You mean you, you see things blurry? You mean you need something called glasses? People probably th probably said that's the most cockamamie thing I've ever heard of, and now we accept it. Uh, uh, the good news is uh, now instead of taking these kids and these adults and punishing them, we treat them. And um, uh, this is a, a bona fide brain syndrome, a bona fide neurological syndrome that we have hard scientific evidence to, to document. The, the common question that comes up is this is such a seductive diagnosis. Everyone can identify with the symptoms. Everyone is uh, distractible, impulsive, restless at one time or That's another. Right. And, the, and the key differentiation is it's a matter of intensity and duration. It's, it's like the diagnosis of depression. Everyone has been sad. That doesn't mean everyone has been clinically depressed. The, the diagnosis of clinical depression rests upon the intensity and the duration of the sadness. So it is with ADD. The diagnosis of attention deficit disorder rests upon the intensity and the duration of the symptoms of impulsivity, restlessness, and distractibility. Mm -hmm. I buy this. I do. Uh, I think like a lot of what ails us, it's amorphous, and we're not sure where the imaginary lines are that separate uh, ADD from just an angry person. Exactly. Um, but it would be the mark of a compassionate society, wouldn't it, if we would at least give ourselves an opportunity to inquire, explore. Uh, we have to wonder how many Scots out there, without the enlightened love of, uh, of, a, of a parents who want to save him, might just go off the deep end. How many are in jail? Not because they're SOBs, yeah. but because... Yeah, I, I, you bet. You go to uh, you go to jails. Uh, uh, you'll find uh, rafts of undiagnosed ADD. I want to balance a little bit, however, what was said earlier in the program. This is not a syndrome that is uh, exclusively the domain of people who are in big trouble. Lots of entrepreneurs, lots of CEOs. No talk show hosts. Lots of hot talk show hosts. Uh, lots of highly successful people uh, uh, have attention deficit disorder. This is this is very much a syndrome associated with high energy, highly creative, can-do kinds of people. Uh, so we might find a, a, a more than average number of ADD uh, people in high position 
uh, otherwise highly esteemed jobs. You bet. I mean, there are a lot of people have speculated that the three presidential candidates in the last election. Uh, uh -huh. uh, uh, um, Scott's so young. Uh, how long does this last? Does it? Are you like that for the rest of your life? <laughs> well, I want to know. The best evidence is that if you don't get over ADD during puberty, it continues for the rest of your life. Um, however, another misconception is that the only treatment is medication. That is not true at all. Uh, uh, there's a comprehensive treatment program that includes behavioral modification, includes relearning certain tricks, you know, finding a, a basket to leave next to your front door where you always put your keys so you don't start off the day with a frantic search for your keys. These kinds of commonsensical, practical measures that we all need, but for ADD people, they're essential. They can't live without them. And these, these non-medication approaches to treatment are every bit, if not more important, than, than, than the medication approach. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll give you all a chance to ask. Thank you. To ask your own questions. Uh, is ADD a bona fide, uh, introducible uh, uh, item in, for example, a criminal trial? Is it probative? Can it be used to un or lessen the responsibility of this? Speak to that for a moment. It should not be offered as an excuse. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is not... This is, you can't say to the speeding ticket, uh, uh, gee, I have ADD, I like to speed. Uh, any, any more than if you're not wearing your glasses, you can say, I ran that pedestrian over, but I didn't I can't see him because I didn't have my glasses on. Yeah. It's not an excuse. However, it can be offered as an explanatory mechanism so it doesn't happen again. So you go get treatment so you don't run them over the next time. I see. And we'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> This house was destroyed by fire in 15 minutes. We're two o'clock this morning. This one was engulfed in flames in five. Family was left in a fire you have no time. If your smoke detector is at one end of the house and the fire starts at the other, will your family get out? It happens so fast. A smoke detector on every floor in every bedroom doubles your chances of surviving. First alert reminds you one smoke detector is not enough. Every floor, every bedroom, because every minute counts. Instead of dating an eligible bachelor, they just have their eyes on married men. Most of the time, it's just a game. You give us girls a bad name, you pig. But she's trying to win him for better or worse. How many times has he left you in two years? I can't count. And what about the wives? Well, if they treated him right, they wouldn't come to me. You will never be his wife, baby girl. You don't know that. I hope she yeah. won't. Next, uh, Sally. Uh, Friday at 10 on 21 Alive. For incredible savings at the area's only Broyhill Showcase Gallery, everyone's coming to Ossian Furniture's pre-tax sale. On March 1st, Ossian Furniture will be taxed on its entire inventory, so you'll get spectacular savings from the area's favorite furniture store. Plus, get this, no payments for one whole year. That's right, no payments, no interest till February 1996. Don't miss this pre-tax sale. Broyhill Showcase Gallery, going on now. Ossian Furniture. The Shoe Carnival, half price plus $1 shoe sale. Entire stock already reduced ladies' pink and green sticker clearance shoes. Second pair, $1. Thousands of additional markdowns. Save to 80% and more. Believe it or not, half price sale. Like ladies' guest cross trainer, just $24. And men's Converse Ultralight, now just $17. Don't miss half price plus $1 clearance sale. The Shoe Carnival. For location information, dial 1-800-430-SHOE. For a transcript of Donahue, send $3 to Journal Graphics, 1535 Grant Street, Denver, Colorado, 80203. To order a video cassette for only $24.95, just call 1-800-FOR-VIDEO. Jay Perry is Scott's father. Jay Perry sits in our front row. You're an attorney at law, Mr. Perry. Yes. So you brought your own uh, particular professional skill to try and save your son <laughs> from what could have been uh, heavy-duty uh, jail time here. Uh, so... Uh, uh, as to how ADT may obtain in a criminal situation, you might want to just give us a brief thing. How, did the court respect your plea, or what did you say? Scott was in a juvenile court, and, uh, and so the uh, determination the judge was making was what was going to be the best uh, placement for him. Two suicide attempts, a uh, threat to himself. It was either a state reform school or a private facility if we could line it up, and, and that's what we did. I agree with Dr. Hollowell, though. I don't think ADD in most criminal situations is going to excuse the conduct. 
it may mitigate the penalty. In other words, you, you, we may ask the judge and or the jury to consider that this is not a mean-spirited, evil person. It is right. a person who, and you bring forth a physician who will confirm the ADD theory, and it might just bring right. a little more mercy to the judgment. I think I get it. You wanted to say, my friend. Yes, uh, I've got a question to the doctor. I've been diagnosed with ADD approximately about six years ago, and I'm a senior in college now, and I was on Ritalin at one time, and it seemed to be too much for me. It made me uh, hyperactive, and it made me just really stressed out. Is there another kind of medication that, that you would uh, prefer? First of all, he doesn't want to recommend a pain. Oh, really? All right, but, but for our general information, incidentally, is this a common response to Ritalin? One medication or another will work in about 80% of cases. Um, but some people don't do well on Ritalin and others don't do well on Dexedrine. And then there's another class of medications, the antidepressants, well, Butrin has been mentioned, Desipramine is another. 80% uh, uh, of people with ADD will respond to one medication or another. So if, if one doesn't work, by all means, try another. And also bear in mind that the non-medication approaches to treatment should also uh, be taken very seriously. The Boys get this three times more often than the girls. Well, it used to be taught that the boys got it ten times more often. And I think before school is out, it'll be even. And, and I think the reason is girls tend to get a different form of ADD. Girls tend to have the non-hyperactive daydreaming kind of ADD that can look like <laughs> being shy or look like being depressed, whereas the boys get the, the hyperactive, disruptive ADD, and so they get diagnosed. So a, so a young woman who rarely speaks up in a social situation. Exactly. May in fact be daydreaming, may be lost in her thoughts. Emily Dickinson, I think, is a wonderful example of someone, I, I bet, I can't prove it, had ADD. Really? Uh, lost in her thoughts, lost in these beautiful uh, mazes of, of words and images, uh, but interpersonally not quite there. And, and uh, a, a lot of females uh, uh, of any age uh, uh, can, can fit that ADD picture, whereas the men who have it tend to be more the thrill seekers, the danger seekers, the risk takers. They get either diagnosed or, or, or called attention to in some other way. Mm -hmm. So I, I think as we look for it in women, uh, we're finding it more and more, and that's why the ratio has come down so much. You want to stand? Yes. Um, yes, I was wondering, um, if um, you have ADD, why do you um, have these like drastic suicide attempts i mean why is it why would self-destruction be like that yeah why would you want to destroy yourself as opposed to strictly yeah. others well bear in mind that depression often comes with add in fact most add folks most of the time are very upbeat it's a, it's an it's an upbeat generous hearted uh, uh, kind of condition. However, depression often accompanies it and when you combine depression with impulsivity that's a suicide attempt. More questions from this audience when we come back in just a moment. Right. Small news from SOS. Introducing SOS Juniors. Same cleaning power, new smaller pad. Because every new mess deserves a fresh SOS. SOS Juniors. When it comes to serious accident cases, did you know insurance companies often scout law firms like a football coach scouts opposing quarterbacks? Insurance companies want to know which firms are likely to settle a claim for less than it may be worth, and which firms have a track record for receiving fair compensation for their clients. If you or a loved one's been injured, the lawyer you choose does make a difference. The Levimoff Law Offices. Call 423-2581. Let's talk about bedrooms. Now, have you been sleeping on some lumpy old saggy in the middle, no support, stiff back in the morning, feathers flying, mattress on the floor, no box spring bed? I got a way to make you sleep better. It's a whole bedroom suit from your Get It Today store. RTO, rent to own. Hey. Your choice of complete bedrooms, including mattress set, only $22.99 a week. $22.99, the lowest rent to own price, guaranteed. Look us up in the white pages under RTO. 
a lot of the time it's the fact that the customer hasn't done their homework or their research or they don't understand what avenues to take to get a problem resolved most of the time when we deal with businesses they're on the up and up there's some sort of miscommunication between the customer and the business I had a Fort Wayne woman contact me about a piece of furniture that she bought she spent thirty five hundred dollars on a piece of furniture she wasn't happy with it so she canceled her check was that the right way to go absolutely not looking for trouble tonight at 6 and 11 from WPTA TV 21 Alive News to be a part of the audience, please send a postcard for free tickets to Donahue Tickets, care of NBC, 30 Rockefeller Plaza, New York, New York, 10112. Remember, postcards only, please. Be sure to include your phone number with area code. Uh, Don, you don't, that's all right. The address, um, Chad is the acronym, Children and Adults with Attention Deficit Disorder. That's at 499 Northwest 70th Street, Plantation, Florida. The zip is 33317. I realize there's a lot of information up on the screen right now. Some of you don't have your pencil. We'll be happy to repeat this at the end of our program because there are people who really feel this and for whom uh, uh, ADD is a life-altering experience. Dr. Woodfield, uh, we be uh, you... Uh, talked to us earlier in the program about your own, uh, the fact that you have been diagnosed with ADD. Among other things, you were told you were dry drunk. What's That's a dry true. drunk? Well, the way they explained it was that uh, people who, uh, the way it was explained to me, that people who have drank in the past sometimes exhibit symptoms of a drunk even though they don't drink. I see. And so that's... Right. They told me that I was dry drunk. Right. Um, I just want to make sure that you have an opportunity to, to say that you, you are a, right now, a doctor with a license in, in, in good standing, uh, and, and you believe you practice uh, appropriate yes. uh, therapeutic med medicine. Mm -hmm. And yes. whatever ails you, whatever problems you may have had with the medical board is not ADD related. They're false. You just... Well, it was related <laughs> to a disability question where uh, I... In the process of being diagnosed, I was diagnosed every, from everything to having a di being a dry drunk to having brain damage. Right. And so uh, they took that information said, well, this guy has got to be a da bad doctor, and we kind of want to keep him out of Idaho. Right. And so that's what they did. Phil, first, I'd like to say you look great. We don't have a lot of time. <laughs> Secondly, how did you pass your medical exams if you were, had this disorder? Well, I, I think it's a, a, a situation with relative strength and weaknesses. I mean, uh, I have certain learning disabilities, but I think overall I compensate for those, some of those things, and I think it's the same with uh, normal people also. Yes. Yes, this is to the doctor. Um, what is the process of diagnosis? I mean, I looked at that screen, and I could probably identify with 90% of those questions. <laughs> I love the applause, but you're, we're almost out of time, Doc, and that's a very good question. It's a, it's a very important question, and, and the diagnosis has to be made by a professional. Because uh, everyone can identify with the symptoms does not mean that everyone has ADD, and that's terribly important. You see those symptoms, you say, gee, that sounds like me. The next step is to go to a professional, and that professional will put you through the various steps uh, that lead toward a bona fide diagnosis. Do not diagnose yourself. Uh, we need to be very careful that attention deficit disorder does not become a fad or, or, or the sort of the disease of the 90s. This is a, a true bona fide neurological syndrome based in the brain, and it, and it requires the attention of a physician to make the diagnosis. Over here, please. Um, the doctor from Cambridge mentioned neurological, but the other doctor mentioned disability. Is this covered under the American Disabilities Act? Yes. Yes, it, it is. It is. But, yes, sir. Okay. You want to... You, also, you, yes. the, also, the doctor that I go to, Dr. Amen, does something that's called brain imaging. He goes in and he literally takes an x-ray of your brain and it shows the frontal lobe of your brain not turning on. And, you know, that was helpful for me because it... Yes, I, I would have been like the rest of you guys. If I had not seen it, I, I would have been... Suspicious yeah. of the, Yeah. If you're forgetting to pick up your kids and having memory lapses, <laughs> how is this different from Alzheimer's? Is she early Alzheimer's patient? Or? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's a, it's a, a good question, and, and uh, problems with memory are associated with ADD. However, uh, they're not nearly uh, to the degree of severity of Alzheimer's. And I, and I want to stress again 
uh, that there are many positive aspects that go with this syndrome. We've been talking today about the more lurid, but but these folks tend to be can often be high functioning, creative, dynamic uh, leaders of business, uh, uh, leaders in, in in various fields, professors, uh, uh, high functioning individuals. This is not the syndrome uh, only of people who, who are, are in deep trouble. And we'll be back in a moment. Pinkard and Bowden are songwriters. Pinkard and Bowden are musicians. But Pinkard and Bowden are not normal. Elvis was an ark. Now, for the first time on television, Pinkard and Bowden doing what they do best, getting stupid. And the tail light glow. I see them. Why do we call them Sandy? Blue hairs driving in my lane. Daddy sang bass. Mama sang tenor. Me and little brother sang bass and tenor. Any similarity between Pinkerton Bowden and other famous country music stars is strictly intentional. Mama, she's lazy. Lazy. I drank too much again. Help me make it through the yard. Ooh, I'm driving my wife away. She can't take another day. This collection contains 22 twisted hits by the original twisted artist. She thinks I steal cars. Oh, I lost her. Pinkerton Bowden, getting stupid. On two LPs, two cassettes, or compact disc. Here's how to order. Have your credit card ready and call toll free 1 800 581 7500. That's 1 800 581 7500. Or send 1498 for two LPs or two cassettes, or 1698 for compact disc. Plus $4 shipping and handling to Getting Stupid. P.O. Box 7200, Department H, Libertyville, Illinois. 60048. Cub Foods. This is your spin less store. Get your favorite 7-Up products just $3.99 a case. Save on fresh pork steaks only 89 cents a pound. Pick up Ultra Dynamo Liquid, get two for just $3.48. And gallon jugs of Shingles Milk are only 79 cents each. Cub Foods. Lower prices. Every aisle. Every shelf. Every day. ever dream of this moment? Meet Miss Americas from ages 21 to 76. Next, Donahue. I have a question for Cynthia. I know you're no longer married, but you have children. Do you have the children or your husband? No, I have my son, and and he's he is absolutely the most wonderful person on earth. He keeps me on track. Right over here. And it, he does not have ADD. He's not my biological child, though. Run, running out of time. Scott. What behaviors manifest themselves in prison that were directly related to ADD that you said got you in prison? I don't, I don't know if it was any things that were re because of ADD. It was just that those ADD caused frustrations and problems in the home that I expressed in, in wrong things. Um, uh, Dr. Hollowell uh, has co-authored uh, a book titled Driven to Distraction. This is his uh, contribution to your understanding of this. Uh, uh, we also have uh, answers to uh, distraction. Two books that, uh, let me give you this, this uh, support group again. These are people who know about this. The Children and Adults with Attention Deficit Disorder organization, CHAD, is at 499 Northwest 70th Street, Plantation, Florida. The zip is 33317. There's a young man with his hand in the air here. You, you wanted to say. Just briefly, uh, all of you have one thing in common. You all seem to have jobs or through puberty or whatever that you had high stress. And it just seemed like all of you, instead of uh, taking ways of relieving the stress, that you're taking medication. It just seems like we're living in the 90s and we live with stress. So 
We've yeah. got to learn to live with stress without. It's, it's you know what? It's not about stress. It's about we move to our own beat. I move to my own drummer. That's why I had to start my own business. I am very successful at what I do, but I had to find the path myself. We're trying to say, let's help kids so they don't have to find it themselves. Did you want to say, let Dr. Wonder say. The stress of ADD is an inner kind of stress. This is not a, a modern life response to stress syndrome at all, and it's important to separate that. The stress of ADD is generated internally, and, and the treatment uh, is, is not the same as the treatment for stress reduction. Emily right. Dickinson lived in the woods yeah. and was under very little external stress, and yet her mind was always whirring, yeah. and, that, and, that's, and that's a key differentiation. Briefly, Cynthia wanted to say. Uh, we have to have, or not all of us, but I know part of us have to have that stimulation. My little brother races motorcycles. He, his, his driving record looks like the national debt. I mean, he has 9,000 tickets. He, does he have ADD? Yes, and he, he is not diagnosed and will not. Yes. And it is hereditary. The best part of knowledge, it's a biologically based syndrome that is usually genetically transmitted. May I ask you to join me in thanking all these brave people for telling us. Services provided and promotional fees paid by the following. Mentholatum Pain Gel Plus, a different kind of pain relieving gel with aloe, vitamin E, and a moisturizer. It's strong, but it's gentle. Mentholatum Pain Gel Plus. When looking for a toothpaste, remember there's more to Rembrandt than whiter teeth. Rembrandt fights cavities and reduces plaque and tartar better than regular crest. Rembrandt toothpaste for healthy gums and whiter teeth. I've been heavy all my life. I wanted to take off the weight and go and dazzle them this year. I got smart one day and called Jenny. And now I'm skinny and happy. This is 21 Alive News on the Hour. Good morning, I'm Eric Olson. Senator Richard Luger says he doesn't believe his prospective candidacy for the presidency played any part in Dan Quayle's decision to drop out of the race. Luger says he hasn't decided whether or not to seek the GOP presidential nomination. Why are some women only attracted to married men? Most of the time it's just a game. Next, Sally Jesse Raphael. Friday at 10 on 21 Alive.